So I've been on a 4K ROG screen from like 2021 for a little while now and recently upgraded my entire system. And I started to see OLEDs come through. A lot of people will buy OLED monitors. I'll check them out. And because I'm dealing with the customer, I'll get to check out the screen and see how nice it is. One day I set up one of the OLEDs and I just couldn't look at my older IPS screens the same way anymore. And so I went around on the internet looking at every review that I could possibly find on OLED and I am not gonna lie, I'm still pretty afraid of OLED burn-in. And I know some of you guys are gonna get probably mad at me in the comments, but uh, I don't know, it seems like half the internet says they've come into an issue with it, or maybe it was like an older screen or something like that. And then the other half are like, I've never had an issue, burn-in is not a big deal, the technology's gotten better and better. And this screen right here is kind of a decent example of that. This is an Alienware that my friends had for a while. He uses it for office work. And I looked at this very closely and I cannot see any burn-in issues anywhere, especially, I mean, right now it's gonna be tough because I'm doing a little side-by-side -side run of a video, but I could not find anything that made me question the OLED screen that much. And this one's a couple years old, it's not brand new. That being said, KTC, a company that I worked with before, um, they sent me over a screen months back during my dad's teardown. We had to fix his computer. And all I did was put that screen in the video. I didn't really like review it, nothing. And they were totally cool with that. They recently reached out back in November and they sent this to me to do a review and very loose guidelines on stuff. They were very chill about it. And I actually recently had like a flood downstairs in my house. So I had to like take time away from doing this review. They were totally cool about it. And that kind of stuff says a lot when you're dealing with people who send you products for review. Also, if you know the channel, I've only taken like five reviews in three years. So I was pretty stoked to set this up and try it. And over the last two months, I have been using this mini LED. This is the KTC M27P6. Not only was the box pretty cool to look at, but it was actually packed very well, which is a nice thing to hear. Also the base, the base was very simple. Pretty much just pop in this little vase amount section here, screw on the bottom and that's it. And the base is really nice and sturdy. This also comes with an extended warranty, a USB-C for the USB-C charger and a DisplayPort cable. It features DisplayPort 1.4, and then you have two 2.1 HDMIs with a USB 3.0 and also one fast charging 65 watt USB-C. The stand features a vertical mode. So if you'd like to have the screen sideways, you can do that. Or if you wanna have it just up or down and have it higher or lower, it also has that functionality. Looks are of course subjective, but in my opinion, this is a pretty premium looking design. It kind of reminds me of like some of the high-end Sony monitors. It features a rear button to navigate through the menu, but let's get on to the actual screen. So this is an excellent gaming monitor because it comes with a dual mode. You can do 4K 160 hertz, which is my preferred gaming type of uh, speed. Or if you want to go full HD at 320 hertz, it is pretty good for shooters. It is a 27 inch 4K panel, of course, and it is mini LED. They call it mini LED quantum dot. This screen is a two millisecond fast IPS panel, and that has the overdrive features and all sorts of other stuff in the menu, like the low latency mode. It also features HDR 4 1400, which to be honest is probably the most mind blowing amount of HDR I've seen in a while. Uh, I was down at HDR 400 on my last screen, so going from that to this is quite a big jump. I've also been doing all of the video editing on this screen over the last two months, and I've been pretty impressed. It has the 99% RGB gamut and it has DCI P3 at 98%. There is an extreme advertisement, but if you count the local dimming of 3,490 to one up to 6,500 to one, it's pretty close to OLED. That being said, the only minor critique I have about this monitor is just certain viewing angles will make the hazing around objects in a dark area look a little bit worse, but you really can't tell if you're looking directly on. So now this is in a purposely really dark room. I turned all the lights out and I slightly moved the camera back and forth to see if you can see any hazing on the text. And depending on the camera settings, like if you crank the ISO, you'll see the hazing a little bit better. But uh, overall, it's not bad at all. A few other things to mention that aren't related to what I do, but are a good feature set if you're looking for this. You can connect a MacBook to this thing and easily just run it right through the USB-C. 
Uh, it has a KVM switch. And then here in something like Cyberpunk, we have G-Sync enabled. So it supports G-Sync and FreeSync. And for anyone on console, the PlayStation and Xbox supports 4K at 120 Hertz with HDR and VRR support, which is variable refresh rate. And I gotta say guys, after spending some time with this KTC screen, which the other thing too is this screen is about half the cost of this OLED screen. It's uh, they, they range from four to $500. I will link the screen down below. Um, this OLED roughly was like 950 or a thousand or something when it first came out. Still very expensive, and many of the OLEDs are still very expensive. I cannot see enough of a difference between these two where I wouldn't recommend this first. I mean, I know that these are two different aspect ratios and all that stuff, but I'm, I'm talking the technology itself. If anything, the HDR on this is insanely bright. I'll throw the number up on the screen. It's a really, really bright HDR screen. This one still looks excellent, but we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. And occasionally, like, you'll see some hazing on the mini LED, but it's so hard to really tell. And you have to see it at like a certain angle too. Like if you're looking directly on, but again, I can't sit here and look at the two and justify double the cost for this. Uh, if this was this size and it wasn't an ultra wide and let's say it was 800, cause that's kind of like the going range of these screens. I don't know, like the feature set that this KTC has is really cool. It has like dynamic overdrive. It's just getting harder as time goes on to... Unfortunately, my mic cut out at this point, but just to clarify, I, I just think that a $500 screen or a $450 screen like this quality that matches a eight or $900 screen, it's really just hard to justify at this point unless you're just going for name brand. I think that the screen is a really decent screen. I ran through the pixel test. I have no dead pixels. The screen is really nice and solid. That's good. Um, the OLED also doesn't have any dead pixels, but we're using this to compare because I think the, the Alienware is gonna go through maybe a more rigorous test uh, coming out of the box, but yeah, it looks like that's something on the screen. Yeah, looking good with the dead pixel test. So I will show you guys this in the dual mode because you can switch it to 1080p, but at 4K, 160 FPS, we're still getting a really nice looking UFO here. Smooth, looks good. Everything passes. Um, let's switch it over to 1080p and I'll show you that. All right, so now we are at 1080p and we're doing about 320 FPS, 319, 320. And you can see the little difference between the 160 clarity and the 320. Um, personally, I love playing COD at 320, so I got a little bit used to that. Um, depends on the game. Sometimes, like if you're playing a less intense game, drop it back to 4K 160, looks way better. Um, but anything like CSGO, whatever, 320 is pretty cool. So now what I'm gonna do after we had kind of set up the resolution over there is I'm gonna go back and just switch back to 4K. So we're gonna go back to the gaming setup, go all the way to the bottom and go to dual mode and turn it to off. Off just resets it to the regular 4K instead of 1080p. And this will quickly change itself and the NVIDIA control panel will know what to do the second time. The first time it kind of freaks out a little bit, but the second time it'll immediately show back up. So this is pretty cool. I didn't even change anything. It immediately picked up the refresh rate again and went back to uh, 4K. By the way, that Mior or screen door effect look is actually the OLED, not the mini LED. Some other features that this monitor has that I really got used to is this one here, the overdrive, which I always put it on dynamic overdrive. Unfortunately, the ultra fast has a little like overshooting, but dynamic uh, overdrive. And then we also have low input lag, which is another thing that I always put on and uh, just saves the, the gameplay. So of course there is the brand KTC, which is actually, they're, they're a company that's been around for a little while. Um, they just started kind of picking up out here. I've noticed that they were pretty present at CES this year. They actually gave me an invite, but I could not afford the uh, plane tickets out there. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with their brand and how they've been, I don't know, how they've treated me so far, how their other screen works, because now this is the second screen I've been using. And so far, everything has been rock solid. And I'm a guy coming from all Asus ROG screens. Like I was really picky for a long time. When I replaced my 4K screen that is over here with this one, uh, I was pretty surprised. And I get to see quite a lot of screens, whether it's just going into Best Buy or customers dropping off complete setups and I'll test the screen, test all their hardware. So like I've seen a lot of screens over the years. And when it comes to price to performance, like this is kind of in a weird way, like end game for $500 range. 
All right, so Gino wants me to give it a Gino score. Let's see. I think at the end of the day, at its pricing of around $450 to $500, this screen is absolutely excellent. I would give this about a score of an 8 out of 10 total, which is a really good score. There's a few things like the bloom or hazing that I'm not a huge fan of. It's, it's very, very minor at certain angles. But other than that, for the price of this screen and the quality that it gives you, um, this is an absolutely excellent screen. And I think it would be a great buy going into 2026.